Alongside the very first images released by JWST, we also heard about an exoplanet called WASP-96b. We didn't get an image of this planet, but we did see the spectrum of the atmosphere of the planet. This means we now know really well what this atmosphere is made of, and it's pretty steamy. WASP-96b is a bit over a thousand light years away. It's half the mass of Jupiter and about the same size. However, something interesting is that it orbits a star similar to our own sun, but its orbit is closer than Mercury orbits our sun, meaning it completes an entire orbit in just 3.4 Earth days. This makes it unlike any planet at all in our solar system, and also leaves it firmly outside the habitable zone, but its size and speed made it a great first target for Webb. It was picked because it had a high chance of strong features, and it was also in the right place for Webb to look at it right now. Using its nearest instrument, it took the light coming from the planet and broke it down into the different wavelengths, just like breaking white light into the rainbow. The difference is these are infrared wavelengths that we're looking at here. As the planet transits its star, the light from the star passes through the atmosphere of the planet, filtering through whatever makes up that atmosphere. By comparing the starlight when there's no planet in the way with when the planet passes in front of it, we can see exactly which wavelengths of light are absorbed by the atmosphere. In turn, this tells us which elements and molecules make up that atmosphere. So what do we see? Well, interestingly, a lot of water vapour. These lumps and bumps we see are the signature lumps and bumps of H2O absorbing the starlight as it passes through the atmosphere. Remember, this water will be a gas because of how hot the planet must be, so we know it's water vapour. We also thought this planet was totally cloudless, but it turns out that that was completely wrong, and Webb saw evidence of clouds and hazes in the atmosphere of WASP-96b because of all the separate H2O peaks and the fact that they're lower than expected. This told us there's probably clouds around. Using these heights, we can also calculate that the atmospheric temperature must be about 725 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Beyond that, this is just a first look, and it's hard to definitively see anything else. The fit here uses a best fit model, but best fit is a very subjective term, so we could improve these models and start to see more elements present in the spectrum. I should say that on this plot, each of the 141 data points represents the amount of a specific wavelength of light that's blocked by the planet and absorbed by its atmosphere. Over the coming months, Webb will start to try and take spectra of even smaller planets. In particular, one of the best targets for potentially habitable planets is the TRAPPIST-1 system. JWST will look at all seven planets in that system, work out if they have an atmosphere, and if they do, it'll try and see what they're made of and look for biomarkers like ammonia and phosphine, which could tell us there's a chance of life. There are also plans to look at other Earth-like planets and even look at the other planets in our solar system, from Mars outwards and asteroids and comets too. It's not gonna do the inner planets because they're pretty close to the sun and pointing web at the sun is a bad idea. Actually, we also learned that JWST has already looked at Jupiter during commissioning as a test for tracking a moving object. They use Jupiter because it's so bright and it moves relatively fast. This is good for a test and it provides a challenge for looking at its moons too, because we need to pick them out of the bright glow of Jupiter. Apparently, those images of Jupiter still exist and they're incredible, so we can all excitedly wait for those. We also heard that there are no concrete plans to look at the closest exoplanet to us, Proxima Centauri b. This is because that planet doesn't actually transit its star from our point of view, so Webb can't take a spectrum in the way it did for WASP. They might work out something in the future, but at the moment, it's not at all on the schedule. All in all, this data seems to tell us that everything we plan to do in the first season of Webb observations is bold, but it's not bold enough now we know how good this observatory really is. In the second round of applications for time on the telescope, we'll probably see even bolder plans for using Webb, now we know how well it can take spectra and how deep it can see. Do you have any other questions about this spectra or anything that Webb might do? Let me know if you do and subscribe so you don't miss any content about Webb and much, much more. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.